Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and today we are looking at the second Atari 2600 that I got from the um, joystick lot. Uh, this is the one that I was told didn't work, that the woman had tried it and couldn't get it to do anything. And um, If we have a look here, actually, it does actually work reasonably well. Um, I did find some issues with it. Um, one thing is the cartridge slot there is very 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 temperamental you only have to just touch it and you lose the um, image so the slot does need cleaning on this and also the RF on it was pretty poor it took a awful lot of effort to actually get um, even the image I've got here actually to display on the screen um, I did try getting an image on this old LCD that I've got there this one uh, that has got an analog tuner built into it, but um, try some right, I could not get a lock signal um, on that TV. You find this a lot with the more modern LCDs, even the older ones that still have an analog tuner built into them. Uh, you just don't get as good an analog um, input as you did on the older CRT TVs. I mean, this is a reasonably modern CRT TV. It's probably from the late 1990s. It's a what was uh, referred to as a caravan set so it runs on uh, mains R12 volts I'm actually running this on, I'll switch that off now anyway uh, I'm actually running this on um, 12 volts as we speak because um, I bought this from a car boot sale for a pound because uh, it didn't work and when I checked it out the only thing that was wrong with it was the um, mains transformer had, the mains power supply at switch mode had failed in it so um, as I have lots of uh, 12 volt power supplies lying around I just run it on 12 volts that's that noise you can hear in the background is it's actually running off my um, my Amstrad um, 6128 and my my uh, oh let's lift that out of the way and my um, Spectrum Plus 3 uh, power supply which you can uh, just see off in the background there behind my lamp um, I've done a video about making that um, previously anyway uh, that's not what the video today is going to be about the video today is going to be about doing that um, composite mod that I uh, talked about and then didn't end up filming due to my uh, not pressing record on the camera. So um, we have the AV mod that we made in the previous video. Let's have this piece of paper there. It, I use the piece of paper because it helps me frame the um, shots from the camera, no other reason. And what we are going to do, we're not actually going to do the mod on this one. Because as I've said, it has more issues than just needing an AV mod. Because it's going to need some cleaning of the uh, cartridge port in there. And I just want to do this video on actually how you do the AV mod on one of these. So what we are going to do is we are going to do the AV mod on this one. This is um, what they refer as a Vader model. <laughs> the only difference is that um, that's black instead of being um, silver on these standard models. It's exactly the same. Atari 2600 Junior. Um, as with the others that I have, made in Ireland. So um, not made that far away from us here. Um, and yeah, we're going to mod this one purely for the fact that the other one has a few more issues. Like I say, it needs a cartridge connector um, doing on it. It needs a bit of cleaning. Some of the switches are a bit iffy on it. This one, there's, it works perfectly, this one. It actually gives a nice RF output. But uh, they're not much used to modern, on modern TVs with an RF output. So this is the one uh, we're going to mod today. So without further ado, let's... Uh, Let's get inside this thing and we will, um, I will show you what we need to do to um, do the mod on it. Just uh, grab the correct screwdrivers. Oh, there we go. First of all we need a Phillips screwdriver to uh, get inside this thing. So let's get in there. There's four screws on the base to uh, get you in there. Last screw out. So let's take that out. Tip it over and try not to lose them two screws. They've come out okay, so just put them to one side so we don't lose them. 
and then it's a case of getting in here. Now there's a few clips at the front here um, that can be a little bit of a pain to uh, release. What we can do is we get a we get a screwdriver and just basically just ease the clips back with a screwdriver. You can see them through the grills here. Doing it that way is just a little bit less less damaging than other ways I've seen people do it where they've just yanked it or fiddled with it. If you just ease them three clips back with the uh, screwdriver you'll find they come out quite easily. Now don't just lift the top off straight away. There's one more step we need to do. There's a little ribbon cable in these. It's very similar to what's found in the old 48k Spectrums. And it just goes here and it just connects the buttons there up to the actual console. It's right there. So obviously we just have to be a little bit careful while we um, disconnect that. And then we are uh, we are in. So this is our uh, inside of our 2600. Now to do this mod we do have to um, basically disassemble this. So the first thing we need to do is we need to remove the actual board from the case. And there's just a couple of plastic clips. There's one at that side there, there's one at this side here. If you just flick them back with your finger, the board comes out nice and easy. And now the next thing we need to do is we need to remove this metal shield in here. We are going to be putting it back when we've finished, but for now we just need that out of the way. So the way we do this is if we turn it over, there's lots of little bent tags all the way around it, and we need to straighten them with a pair of pliers. Now I have got somewhere around here the perfect pliers for this. You just want some little long nose pliers like that. Only cheap ones will do. These are only cheap ones. I think these are a pound from the local uh, the local pound shop. But uh, like I said, for the, doing this type of stuff they're absolutely fine. And all we need to do is basically just go around this and straighten all them little twisted um, tags. Some of them are more twisted than others. I don't know if they used a machine to do this with or they had some uh, poor little Irish fella or Irish uh, woman sat there all day twisting the uh, twisting the um, tags on these um, shieldings. They probably did because when this was um, built they did uh, a lot more manual um, construction rather than nowadays where it's all done there by machines. Right there we go. Uh, now next thing you need to well, next thing you need to do to get this off, if you just take a flat blade screwdriver and just ever so gently just just bring it underneath where you've straightened them tabs off and it just helps clip them free. Just be careful you don't scratch the board or damage the board while you're doing that. But all we need to do just lift it up. Just ease the screwdriver over and there we go that's the base of it off there's a little bit of uh, something icky here but I don't think it means I think it's just a bit of flux residue actually from when it was first made a little bit sticky and nasty anyway that won't matter and um, once we've got that off if we do exactly the same on this side just get your screwdriver under and just very gently just ease it up you will see these um, clips just uh, free off like that. Keep going all the way around. There we are, and that's the uh, that's the metal shielding off. Let's straighten that crystal out. I'm sure that wasn't meant to be bent over. And there we are. That's the um, bare board. Now what we need to do is there's some parts we need to take off this board um, to actually do the mod. Mainly what we need to get rid of is we need to get rid of the modulator there because we're going to use a space that that um, populates. Uh, we need to take the cable. We can leave that connector in place because the new cable will actually just uh, slide down the side of it like that. You could take it off if you want and tie a knot in the cable to stop it pulling through. But personally I like to leave that... Um, little connector there in place. But anyway, we take off the modulator, we take off this little coil here that you can um, see me point to, the red coil there. We need to remove that transistor there 
and we need to remove, let me just remember which, um, and then we need to remove, I believe it is that resistor right there. Yeah, it's that resistor there we need to take out, which is um, R56. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's get the modulator and get them parts off the board. I've got my uh, soldering iron warmed up, so we'll just disconnect. We'll just disconnect that first. And just heat the wire up. It should come off easy enough. There we go, that's the first piece. Let's heat that up there. That's that off. Get center it. So you could take the whole connector off, but I don't really see the the need. Remove it out like that. So we can leave that in situ. We turn this over. What we need to do is we need to take the solder away from the, uh, the tags on the bottom of there, just so we can lift the uh, modulator out of place. So that's them two there, and them two there, and then we need to desolder them connections right there. And to help us do that, we will use a uh, solder pump. This is just your cheapy, as cheap as you can get, solder pump. I do have access, well, I do have a um, desoldering station, but most people just doing the odd mod aren't going to have that, so I thought I'd do it uh, as if I had fewer tools than I actually have. So if anyone wants to follow this, they can do. Just heat that up. Some of these will uh, take a couple of passes to uh, remove with a um, little handy solder pump like this. In fact, what we might have to do there is just add a little bit of solder. I know it seems strange that you're trying to remove something you want to add solder, but with this old solder which has been there years, you can actually make it a lot easier to remove by adding some new fresh solder first. So we'll just heat that back up again, make sure it's nice and molten that's better. Let's try this one on this side. Let's get the old solder off my eye. Now I have a feeling they've twisted these round when they fitted them so these are going to be a little harder to uh, remove. So once again we'll just add a new, another little bit of fresh solder first. Get that nice and flowing. You can go in and suck it away. And go in again. Just heat that up again. Suck it away. Onto the next one. And add another little bit of fresh solder to that. There we are. And last but no means least, we need to just uh, free these legs off here. So, again, I think we're just going to add a little bit of solder to each one of them. Just to make life a little bit easier. Let's get the old solder out of my uh, desolder pump. One. Two. Three. Four. They should be okay. We'll just give them a little twist with the pliers just to make sure that they're free. There we go. Like that. Now we should be able to perhaps just ease this uh, modulator off now. I'll just get the screwdriver underneath it. No, it's still being held on that a little bit. And I think it's because these have been twisted around when it was built. So now we've got most of the solder off, we should be able to untwist these. Yeah, that's better. They haven't twisted the other side, but they've definitely twisted this side around when it was being built. 
probably to hold the part in place while it was being soldered. Let's get in with the old, old desoldering again, just to make sure there's no more nasty old solder on there. Sometimes you do have to go over things multiple times to clear clear the solder away. Let's give that another try now. That is lifting, but it's still uh, it's still being stubborn. What we can always do is just cut them uh, cut them tabs off like that if they're being problematic because we don't need them, we're not reusing that modulator or anything, we just want it out of the board and what I will do I'll just add a little bit more solder to the tops of them like that and once again we will try sucking that away and see if we can clear that last bit of solder away Cleaner. Yeah, let's try this one. And once again, let's see if we can get that off right. This one's being really, really stiff. Let's see where we can. Now we're just going to pull the bottom off if we try it doing it that way. Hmm. Let us try. And this one is definitely stuck on more than uh, most that I've come across. Let's try a bit of heat on the top there, see if we can just get that to free off. Once we've got one corner up, the rest should be fairly easy to get out. Let me see if we've got a smaller, thinner screwdriver we can try. Oh, indeed, that might do it nicely. We get that hook under there. It is just a little bit of residual solder that's holding this now. I said it's pretty much free. There we go. You can see that's lifting now. You can hold it up like that while it sets. Go in with the hook again. Try it in with the screwdriver again. I'm doing this in real time so you can see exactly what issues you come up with. I mean, you see so many YouTube videos and everything works perfectly first time round. And really, when you're doing this type of stuff, it's not like that. Every one of these you do, you find something else that's a little uh, different and another problem. So I've never had a modulator which has put quite a struggle up as this one is. This is actually slightly different to most of the modulators that I find in these as well. So they must have been using um, two different manufacturers for the modulators. Because that's, that's the type of modulator I normally find in these Ataris. That's where that is something a little bit different. Not that it matters. I mean, where we're making our connections to the board and everything is exactly the same. I just need to get this, uh, this modulator off. You don't actually need to get this modulator off, but I always do for one good reason, and it's where I connect my um, AV board. I actually use where this used to be to uh, mount my AV board. Okay, now we've got that side off. Let's try going in with um, the solder iron and see if we can free these off. That's coming up now. There we go. Doesn't take much. But once you get one side off, you can just pretty much rock it out of the uh, PCB. You just have to heat up the pins. We've got them last couple there. They're uh, nearly free. And there we go. Just that last one is just holding on, just hold the iron on there, and there we go, that's off. Like I said, that was a bit more of a hassle than it usually is. They usually come off a lot easier than that, but uh, that's the modulator removed. 
while we're in here, all we're going to do as well is we're just going to take the solder away from that hole there. That we're using that modulator hasn't been used. With the other type of modulator that you normally see, this is one of the fixing holes. We'll just suck the solder out of that, and you'll see why I've done that a little bit later. So next, let's uh, take that out, that transistor out, and let's take R56 out. Again, you've got two options here. You can uh, just heat up each leg and rock the component out, or you can um, use your solder, desolder um, pump to uh, to help get it out, which is what I'm going to try here. That's the first one done. On to this one. That's that one. Free, is it free? Let's have a look. We'll give that one another go. In fact, we'll just add a little bit of solder. Just like that. Let's give that another, another go. And then I think we can get hold of that and just rock it out. And there we go, that's removed. Next we need to take this uh, transistor out. Again, we can uh, use a desoldering pump. Just heat up the pins and give them a quick... That's nearly out. There's one leg just being a bit stubborn, which is that one. And there we go. That's the, uh, the transistor out. And the last thing we need to do is we need to remove R56, which I believe is that one there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure R56 is that one there. So if we go over, it should be this one right here. Nope, I've, uh, as happens, I've actually desoldered the wrong uh, resistor there. We can easily solder that back in a second though. Let's have a go at taking the correct, the correct resistor out. Yeah, that looks like that's the right one this time. I'll we'll solder that one that we took off the wrong one back in. Good job we didn't take the whole thing out, we only took the solder off that one leg. And we need to move that round. And we need to take that one out there. So we can just straighten that up. There's nothing wrong with using the end of your iron to uh, straighten, a, straighten a leg out, it makes life a bit easier these mostly seem to be bent over slightly and it does make unsoldering them a uh, desoldering them sorry, a little harder so anything that makes life easier is always a bonus ok let's have a look here now we've raised it right up we can just get hold of it and pop it off the board and there we are that's the uh, 
let's get rid of that resistor that's the uh, resistor out so that's all the components removed that need to be removed we've got the modulator we've got the resistor the crystal and the transistor which I just dropped on the floor right so the board is clear now and the points that we're interested in are the bottom of where that transistor was connected that's where we're going to pick our 5 volts up from the top of where R56 was connected that's where we're going to pick our video signal up from then this resistor over here that's where we're going to pick our audio signal up and then we need a ground and for the ground we can use we could use the outer there we can use there's plenty of places we can pick a ground out what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of the solder mask off just there that's the ground line I'll put a little dob of solder on there and that's where we're going to connect our um, ground to I'll just uh, tin that up with a tiny little bit of solder like that, that is going to be our ground point now we've got the uh, got the lead we just need to um, prep these cables like that don't use your teeth like I do but my teeth are already broken anyway from years of doing that so uh, yeah use a proper wire strip you don't use your teeth but there we go that's the uh, wires stripped and ready so our red wire I will start with the red wire it needs to go to where the bottom part of that transistor that we removed is that's what would have been the center leg on the uh, transistor and we need to solder that in place there we go that's the first one in that's nice and tight and we need to use the yellow wire and that goes to the top of where that R56 we took out went let's twist that up a bit better slots in there like that spin that over I need to solder that in position like that but we can just give them two a quick trim we don't want anything sticking up too much like that now these next two wires we just need to quickly tin the wires because we're going to solder these actually directly to the board and just giving them a quick tin for stand just makes life a little little bit easier where's my iron? there's my iron and you can see that let's bring that up there so a little bit of solder on before you start tin the wires up there we go now we need to take that resistor there it's the second from the end just add a little bit of solder to that leg take our white wire which is our audio feed and we need to solder that to that resistor leg like that. Just hold it in place for a few seconds and make sure that the solder's gone off properly because you don't want a dry joint. And then the ground wire. We can solder to that little place where we cleared some sol we cleared some of the solder mask off before and tinned up. So we just put that down there like that. Let that solder into position, hold it, we can let go. And that basically is all the mod wires done. Now the next thing we want to do is just secure this 
in position so it doesn't move anywhere so it doesn't cause any uh, any problems and that's why we cleared some solder away from that uh, little point there because we take a, um, a small cable tie these are what I use for doing panel installation work I've got a bag of a thousand of these from um, back when I used to be an industrial electrician so uh, these are really really handy for um, mod work and any vintage computer repair really they are incredibly handy because they're thin you can pass them through holes and you can use them to uh, repair broken posts in plastic and all sorts like I said they're just a really handy thing to have in your uh, toolbox really but we will pass that through like that so we've got the cable ties we can then take our little uh, mod board put a cable tie around it and cable tie it down that keeps that nice and secure just trim off the excess like that and that is pretty much it uh, we will now uh, reassemble this thing and see if it actually works so first things first we've got the top shielding that we took off and what we want to do with this, if we look there, there's a little bit that's kind of separate. If you look there, it's not fixed to the rest of the um, metal shielding. We take the pliers and just bend that up, flatten it down like that. We've created a little entrance way for our cables that we can route our cables out of there and they're not going to get trapped under any shielding or anything. And then it's just a case of putting the shield in back, making sure all them little tabs. Let's move that out of the way. Squeeze all that round, get the holes to line up. Like that. Now it's a little bit fiddly this um, this point, because you've basically got to get all them little metal tags to all to line back up in their uh, holes in the board. The best way I've found of doing it is to start in one place and just work your way around and they will click back into place. Most of them are back in now. We're around to here. That's in. transistor there being a pain. Let's just bump, push that up so it lines up. There we go, that's in. That one's in. E yep, that one's in. That one's in. They're all in. Fold it back round underneath and take your lower shield in. And again it's exactly the same, just make sure it lines up on all them little, little tabs like that clip them all in position if you lose a couple um, during this procedure it's not going to cause a problem so some may break off I have had um, a couple have just broken off now but it's not an issue and then all you want to do is give them a little quarter turn just to lock the shield in back together And there we are, that's the uh, modded board, there's a little AV mod, we've got our cable coming out, all nice. So if we, uh, we get the uh, base back in, we take our board, place the board back into the uh, base of the 2600 Junior, make sure them two little tags clip in position. Now what I like to do with the cable how I route it, if you look at this corner there you've got a little standoff which takes the um, takes the screw for the corner I just like to bring the cable round the outside of that and push it into place it does take a little bit of effort to get it to sit home and then we can slide the cable down the side of where the old RF connector is there I don't know if you can see that well enough 
give you a look, that's how we've um, got it so the cable comes out. It's trapped by that standoff there, so there's no way that can pull. It's like it's basically it's using that as a strain relief grommet, a strain relief post. So that is nice and secure. It's not cutting into it on the back, it just slides nicely through down the side there. Next, ugh, take our um, top piece and we just have to be a little bit careful reconnecting this ribbon cable. Like I said, it's just like on a 48k Spectrum. If you're too rough with it, you'll tear it. Um, I don't believe there are any replacements for it now. So, like I said, super, super careful while you uh, put that back in position. And then it's just a case of getting everything to line up. Make sure the uh, all the switches click back in position. That must still have some charge in its capacitor. This has been off for how long? Look, you've got no power and if I switch it on. That shows that the capacitor, there's definitely nothing wrong with the main smoothing capacitor in this thing. That's got loads of capacity. That's feeling okay. I think the switch, another thing you have to be careful, because the switches are on the main board, you just have to make sure that when you put them back, the switches actually go where they're meant to go. They seem okay. I think they're in the correct positions. Now we put the, uh, the four screws back in it. Is it going to work? What's the betting? What do we reckon this is going to work? I haven't actually tested the mod board um, that you saw me make on the other video. Uh, it's exactly as I left it from the uh, previous video, but I am confident that there's nothing wrong with it. It's built to my standard design. I haven't tested any of the components, but again, um, they're the components I've used every time, and so far I've not had any problems with them. So. There we go. One modded 2600 Junior. So let's see whether it works. I can find out where the end of this tape is. I'll just cut that. We can get and with using the um, with using one of them uh, three meter leads cut in half, you've got a nice decent length of um, cable for the 2600 to uh, connect to. Right, get my stuff out of the way. We will bring in the uh, composite monitor again, well the TV. So you get a much nicer picture on these old um, Ataris actually using a CRT monitor rather than using a modern LCD monitor. They do work on a modern LCD but I just don't think the picture is anywhere near as good. We'll use a little um, adapter on the back of this so we can plug them um, RCA phono connections straight in. I'm sure you don't need to see me connecting this up. Plug them into the back of there. Like that. So you can see that's just connected into the back of the TV. On the SCART. That is our TV connected up. Let's put some uh, put some power into the Atari. That's working. Okay. I'll pan you up like that so you can see both the Atari and the TV. Let's uh, power the TV on. I will. I will grab my. I've got my skin diver test cartridge here. Let's put the TV into AV mode. We will put the skin diver cartridge in and we will switch on and let's see what happens. There we go. Straight away. And that's a fairly decent um, picture on an Atari I must say. There's, uh, this actually gave quite a nice RF signal out, this particular one. But um, I can say straight away that the um, composite signal it's giving is much, much nicer. We just uh, stop that so it stops that music. But yeah, um, there we go. That is a, uh, 
Atari 2600 Junior AV mod in real time. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, so thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.